The, the, one of the most upsetting scenes in the book is, is the communion. Mine. Do you want to tell us about it? Um, it's actually a bit... I, I wouldn't know how to actually say it, because writing it is one thing, saying it is another thing. But it was about... I wrote about the day of my first communion where my father abused me and was quite um, vicious in how he did that. And I actually think... I think he had... A, that was the day I think he liked... Communion dresses seemed to be the thing he really liked he for his first day, yeah. <coughs> and it, that was, it was one of the things, yeah. And, and that was the, it just seemed to be a, it was like that was the, the it was like the picture of innocence, so therefore you were, you were personified of how innocent you were, and that was what he went for. Can you understand how disgusting and disgusted oh, people absolutely. might be? And you poor thing, you know, for people watching, thinking, you poor little thing there, for God's sake, you know, what. But I'm sure it left. But you're curious, I know, and you're, and, you're, you know, and you're great about it. But it is deeply upsetting to yeah. think that that, that you... That all and it was, and when we were writing the book, and all through the process of writing the book, the, the thing about abuse, there's lots of different things that abuse affects of in your course. life. But until you actually are willing to go back in and really explore it, so you can totally understand the impact it has on you, and the, and the guilt and the shame that I took on, that was not mine. But I had to go in and really do that in order to let that go. Why did he get away with it for so long? Well, you have to remember the culture, society. I mean, sex was a taboo subject because I remember at that time priests could tell a wife she had to perform her duties and she just did it. And she did. So she did, absolutely. Was your dad a masco or was he uh, religious? He was very religious. Very well, religious. He reads and a Bible while he's copping a feel in the other hand. Like, he was incredible. Seriously? Absolutely. Yeah. He'd be driving then, and he had a fierce temper. He couldn't speak civil to anyone. F and and somebody absolutely effing and blind, and there's the rosary beads in the other hand. Like, it was crazy. While he's cursing and shagging somebody off, he'd be doing this with the rosary beads and saying the rosaries. When did it stop? Did it different stop in... Times. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is it... Different times. So can any of you remember? I know you're, you're well, half blocking stuff off and you're half letting stuff no, in. So I know, we didn't block... We didn't, block, we didn't write everything, but we didn't block anything. Yeah. No, I know what you mean, yeah. but just in terms of the, 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 the end game for you, do you recall the day when... I do. You, can you tell us, maybe, to share well, that I, choice? I was around the playground. Yeah. I mean, I'll show you. I was 17 and it was my first period. Now, we all developed very late and sure. I think it's something to do with the views. But I was on a slide at 17, like, and I know, I'm mortified. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm on a slide playing with the kids in the playground, and I was delighted I got my peers, because I didn't know what they were. Yeah. But everybody else had them, and I used to talk about them like I knew what they were talking yeah, about. Yeah, sure. But of course, I'm in agony. I thought I was dying. <laughs> and I ran home, and I said, oh, God. My, and of course, you were just taken into the bathroom and handed this sanitary towel that I thought, I used to play nurses with it beforehand. <laughs> So I was handed this thing, and that was the end of it. That's my explanation. Mm. But after that, my dad stopped abusing me. Now, I hadn't a clue. I didn't make the connection that periods meant you could have been. I had no idea. Mm. I mean, all the time we'd been abused, we didn't even know what sex was. But it was over then. It was over. Same for all of you. Yeah. No, no, well, they had different. They had different. No, no I, I remember one time Joyce went into town with a friend, and I was so upset she wouldn't take me with me. And I was, I was crying on the bed. I was so upset now. And I, was, well, I wasn't calling her. And at that time, <laughs> my father came in and I heard a click, click. And I wouldn't turn around. And I thought, he obviously doesn't realise how upset I am. And I heard the click again. And I was so, now, I mean, devastated. <laughs> <laughs> and I just turned around and I said, no. No, I actually didn't turn. I said no. And I w waited for the clatter. And it never came. But I didn't hear him moving. And I froze for the longest time. And when I peeked over my shoulder and saw he wasn't there, I went out and looked for him. I couldn't believe why I wasn't bashed. I ran out of the house as quickly as I could. And that's when all the guilt comes back because I'm going, I didn't know I had that power. I didn't know that who I blew, could stop Who it. blew the whistle? How, how did he become exposed as the person, the creature that he, an he aunt, was? Actually, he had abused a grandniece. And an aunt actually told my mum. Because and the grannies tried to commit suicide and the family had decided that something would have to be done and my aunt actually volunteered to be the one to tell my mother because at that time they didn't want to prosecute, they didn't want anything to do, they just wanted them to get help. So my aunt was the one who was asked to speak to my mother because she was the closest to her and, and that was the night that everything broke. 
I want to, because time's against us, I, I, the key to, to, in some of this, first, there's two great things about this story. Uh, one is we can, we can show people at home how extraordinary you are uh, in the way you've conquered such a horrible situation. The second is to show, our, I suppose, the state's relationship with children and care for. Your father spe- was sentenced to how much time in prison for, after all that? Seven well, years. Seven, seven years. Seven, 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 years. seven, years. seven, years. So, seven sentences of seven years. How much time did your dad spend behind five, bars? Five years because he was good very behavior. good. He got off for good behaviour. Yeah, I was very good. good. He actually made teddy bears in prison or showed the other prisoners how to make them. No, as in the, you would have no, I, I no tell you, you'd have no idea. He used to ring us looking for fur. We, in the prison. Fur, to supply the fur so he'd teach the other prisoners how to he make was, them. He was, he just had, because he had no conscience so he had nothing... He didn't ever no think he did anything wrong. Seriously, there's something. Seriously he, he died wrong. within two years of no, being one, one, year. one year of being yeah. released. Did you go to the funeral? I did. I know, I know. I'm I not did. judging you, Paula. I'm, I'm, no, she I'm is. judging myself. I did. Why did you go? I went. Well, at the time, it's, it's strange because I had been in therapy and all. And at the time, I actually, I, I was still in my head, I was still looking for him to approve of me. And those two wouldn't go to the funeral. So I thought my father would be sitting up there going, well, at least she turned up because I was wrong to hate her all the time. She was actually all right. And it was just crazy stuff going on in my head. And also because I was in therapy and I thought it'd be closure, I'd be able to let go of it. And because the day of the court case, I didn't actually get to speak. So to me, this was I, the one thing I regretted about him dying was that I didn't get to confront him. So I figured by going to the, the church, I would get to do all that. And I, I didn't. I had the pleasure of meeting you t- before the show started, and I was kind of expecting, I hope you don't mind me saying so, you know, maybe a bit forlorn and beaten down from all <laughs> of this, because your book is, so, is, is a tough read. Uh, it's a f- and then I saw the three of you bursting out going, how's it going, and hugs and kisses. How do you, how do, you do that? <laughs> I think, well, we all, the family, are well known for our sense of humour, and you we did that. laugh at most, the most inappropriate times. But we have gone through but hell. It has got us have. through. Yeah, and we don't want to negate the abuse, but the message really we want to put across with our book is that it doesn't have to define you. That it has been a struggle. There's no quick fix. It absolutely is a journey. It takes time. It took a long time to get there. It takes a long time to get out. And because of the depths of the damage, it really, like, it's a long journey, but so worthwhile. So, Marion Quinn, you, you helped uh, put this project, the book, together. <coughs> what, how, how would you describe these, these three ladies? Oh, oh God, I, I have to remember that I'm on national TV. Yeah. Um, you don't have to be in their company for very long to know how amazing they yeah. are. They're just an inspiration to everybody. They are loved by so many people. And I think there's one thing um, to put a story out uh, in public, but actually the really courageous thing that they have done is that they really went there. They really explored and unpicked the experiences, the emotions, and that's the bit that has been the healing. That's how they've come to understand the damage to themselves, the, um, how they've come to empathise with each other, and ultimately how they've come to forgive each other yeah. and, uh, and to grow and love, and that's why they've got the incredible relationship they have. But you have... How, how are you all doing now? What's, what, what are you up to with yourselves now? Uh, we're working. Joyce. We all have degrees. We're so clever now. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Did any of you go on to have families, children, and everything? Yeah, like I have that? six children. Six children. Yeah. June has three. 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 And Paula is Ellery. Yeah, I'm normal. <laughs> <You're>, oh, yeah. <laughs> and life is good. Yeah, it's good, yeah. And yeah, it's very good at the moment. And I have to say, the process of writing the book has a, has a huge thing yeah. to do with that. It's, it's like just getting rid of it and leaving it where it belongs, which is in the past. And that's not to say you don't take the lessons with you and live with them, but you can absolutely let it go and leave it. And we actually found each other through the process of writing the book. It has been a privilege to talk to you and meet you three this evening. Thanks for coming on and saying hello. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and Joyce, Paul and June Cavanagh. Uh, along with Marion Quinn, who we spoke to there, the, the four of them will be signing copies of their book, Click Click, in Eason at the Square in Talla tomorrow at 1 pm. And we should say that if you've been affected by anything you've just heard and you'd like to talk to someone, that's the number on the screen. Please call it as a matter of urgency um, and hopefully it might change things for you. Please call that number straight away, okay? A uh, short break to take, but do join us in a few minutes' time.